They have a lineout converter that you can utilize in a factory or aftermarket stereo receiver. Going to give you an overview, unbox, review, get it installed, and show you all the beneficial features to see if this is something that you can use in your own system. Stay tuned. Alright, let's go ahead and dig into the unboxing first. This is the XLOC44X lineout converter from NVX. Give you a quick little minute and a half unbox, show you what's inside first. Looking forward to getting this thing installed today. If you want to see all the information about this device, all the offers, options that they offer, check out the links in the description. I don't know, but the key features that I'll see the most important to mention. So if I miss something, sorry. So let's go ahead and dig in. So really small device. Anybody that knows line-out converters, they're really beneficial if you're going to be using them in either an aftermarket or factory stair receiver to boost your RCA voltage output. Also, this one offers a ground isolation. You have different turn-on modes depending on if you want DC remote. You can also filter out certain signals and it has different load and input mode selects. And of course, you can adjust your gain and identify when you're clipping. So go ahead and look at the front output and rear output side first. Really simple in concept. You just have RCAs left and right for your right and your left front and rear. If you want to have either a single two-channel amplifier or a four-channel amplifier, or if you use the rear output for the subwoofer amplifier, then I'll talk about a little bit more later. And on the left side here, you have your ground, power, remote in and out. And then if you're using a factory head unit, you can have your front left, right, rear left, right, etc. with all those speaker inputs. So pretty self-explanatory there. Really looking forward to seeing how this thing does today and show you all the cool features. Really nice, small hand footprint size device. You can really put it anywhere in your vehicle. Definitely going to be a really cool device to use, especially if you have a factory radio and all of these cool featured vehicles today that don't offer options to do an aftermarket. So that's why the main feature would be needed for these on a line-out converter for a factory head unit. And the main feature a lot of people use on an aftermarket is to boost their RCA signal. Or if you want to isolate grounds, this one offers as well. So going to go ahead and dig in to the manual real quick, show you. There's four options that this line-out converter brand NVX offers from the 2 and 2, 4 and 2, 4, 4, 6 and 6 and 8. So real quick, you can see all the feature overviews I'll show you. And then we're actually going to get this thing installed and I'll show you all the features and tuning it in my own system, get it turned on for the first time as well. So if there's anything I missed, do you have any questions, let me know in the description. I'm not the best at this when it comes to this device because I've not really used many of them, but they're really cool to use for all the features I mentioned and more. Check out the link in the description again if you really want to know all the info because that is where it's going to answer all your questions. And there you can see the different options they offer from the XLOC 22, 24, 44, 66, and 88 with your load select, ground isolation, and everything else. So the input insensitivity of this goes up to 40 volts with a output voltage of up to 9.5 volts at 13.8 volts it shows here. That's really important because when you do your RCA output signal. So this is a little diagram I figured I'd show you that it shows in the manual for if you're installing it from your radio. So anyway, that's it. Let's get it installed. All right, so I'm about to install everything to this device and do a first turn on and let's go through all the features. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my 12 volt power, my ground, my remote in, and my remote out to my device. And then my right side, I have my RCAs. So I'm only using one RCA for my front output for one amplifier. Instead of using a rear, only want front speakers for this test. And then for my rear output, of course, if, I, if you wanna run two RCA sets for since this is a four in four out instead of a two in two out you're able to do that so you are able to have this set up as where if you wanted to use your front speakers for one amp and then your rear speakers for another amplifier 
And then you also can do your settings for your gain and clipping settings for your, I'll talk about that in a minute, but I got that installed and then I got my knob nozzle remote installed. So now let me go ahead and do the first turn on. But before that, also just want to explain real quick. So you can install this as I talked about earlier to a factory stereo using these right here, your front and rear left and rights. If you had your factory stereo receiver where you actually would wire up here i'm using an aftermarket stereo so i don't need these going to be running directly from the aftermarket stereo in my vehicle using the remote in and remote out to turn on my devices i hook up to this so i'm going to go ahead and do my first turn on real quick all right so first turn on we'll see if it powers on with no issues should be fine All right, there we go. So first turn on's good, got it powered up. So once again, 12 volt ground remote in and out. Now my actual amplifier is turned on through the remote out, whenever it's turned on through the remote coming from my stereo receiver. So already mentioned earlier, if you have it from a factory stereo receiver, it will install the other way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go through all the features. So I appreciate y'all watching so far. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. Uh, pretty cool little device, really budget friendly as well. Definitely you got to check out the links in the description to see uh, everything about this because I'm not going to show you but the main key features. And let's go ahead and do a rundown. So let's go ahead and dive into the features. So start with the output side. So the outputs connect to the amplifier inputs. This signal is processed by the device here, the LOC line out converter. And what it's going to do is it basically will amplify whatever signal voltage that you want to select, setting it with your gain, which we'll talk about in a minute. So I'm only using a single amplifier two channel with my front speakers. So I have a two channel RCA here, ran to my, my amplifier, and then the remote out going to my amplifier to turn it on as signal when I get power, when my vehicle is on. And this line out converter does that for me. And I already mentioned earlier with the other feature, if you ran a factory, I'm running a head unit, so I don't actually have the, all these wires for the front left and right rear left everything here but next thing so your load select options that you would go from so depending on what kind of load select level you want to do 20 ohm 60 ohm or 20k ohm so the differences are it requires different resistant loads with output audio signals depending on how you want to run your LOC and without that load it won't work so what that means is this LOC needs either a 20 or 60 ohm with compatible depending on what systems you're running and then of course you have other systems that will work best with a 20k ohm so by default it's standard is 20k ohm for the rest is what it says here in the manual so if you just ran by 20k ohm for all of the rest that would be your default of course you could run 20 or 60 depending on what system you're running so next thing on the list they have the grind out ground isolation so ground isolation is very important factor you want to use if you have ground noise you have hissing sounds you may have a power supply that has some kind of grounding problem or you have your iso option here if your power from your supply is separated from your audio and the 200 ohm is between power ground and audio ground so this will help isolate when there is an issue in your system where you're hearing this bad feedback or negative feedback coming, this will help isolate that out. And it gives you the three different features to help troubleshoot and identify which grind isolation issue are you having. So hopefully that explained that. The next thing is the gain, as I was talking about earlier. So with the gain, I would adjust that depending on which output level, nine volt, 0.5 volt is the max, if I went all the way to the max, but I would never wanna run it that high. Personally, I like to run it around the five volt range so I'd be able to ad uh, adjust that with my stereo. I'd set a tone, turn it up until I get to the clipping point around that point. And then I would also use a multimeter to measure my voltage output for that. So your gain is really beneficial here because you could do it on the amplifier, but with this, you're able to control what voltage is going out of your RCAs. So that will help control what your gain level will be set at on your amplifier. So this device is your source for output going to your RCA, which that means is if you just had a standard factory head unit stereo in your vehicle, you don't really have a set pre-voltage output level for your RCA, so this would help identify that. 
So this one's definitely beneficial if you're running factory. If you're already running an aftermarket and you know you only have a two and a half or a two volt and you want to run up to five volt or higher, this will also help with that. So my stereo system up there is a 2.5 volt Kenwood deck. So I actually want to be able to adjust that up to that five volt clean signal RCA output to my my two channel amplifier I have hooked up. So hopefully that explains that. A lot of this stuff I'll do off camera when I actually install it, but I'm showing you the explanations in this video. Next thing is clip. So this clipping signal here will actually identify when your output signal is distorted. So that's what this is. It's identifying your output signal when it gets distorted. So this will be beneficial when you're just doing tasks, playing certain tones or music. You can have, you'll be able to actually see if its signal is negative. And it's very simple to just say, hey, well, I want to turn it down just a little bit. And it's that simple for that. But I recommend after setting it to not mess with this, but actually adjusting your gain on your stereo. Don't adjust your gain here because this is affecting your RCA output for your voltage. So next thing. You have the LPF, so your low pass filter. This is going to be a switch where you can either turn it on or off to help activate the filter out signals above 250 hertz. So I want it off because I'm going to be going to a speaker output that's going to give me anywhere from 3K hertz plus. Whereas if I had it on, this is going to be if I want to use it for a subwoofer. I'm not using it for a subwoofer. I'm using it for speakers. So you want to be able to have that low pass filter off. And this is for the two rear chain channels, or mostly for subwoofers. So if you are running a subwoofer, it says your two rear chain channels are mostly going to be used for that. So you would actually use rear output if you're hooking this up to a subwoofer, and you would just trigger that LPF on for a subwoofer. So I'm not using the subwoofer, I'm using an amp for my speakers. So next thing, boost. So boost, you can adjust. I personally don't want to boost it. I like it at zero because it keeps it clean. Some of y'all might prefer to boost, so you can go up to a 12 decibel at 45 hertz boost. So this is a 45 hertz boost. So this will be more beneficial for a subwoofer boost than an actual speaker boost. So I'm not even going to mess with that feature. And turn on load. I should have mentioned this one earlier, but your turn on load, you can set it depending on if you want DC or remote. DC's standard. I'm turning my devices on using a remote in and out system, so I keep it at the standard remote on. You also could choose the other alternative where you turn it on with DC power. So, but I'm using the remote turn on. So, all right. Next thing on the list is input mode. So I have it set to a two channel because I'm running two channels. You could also go to a four channel system if you wanted to run that. So this input mode, all that's going to do is when you want to run four outputs with two speaker level inputs, you switch to the two channel. And if you do the four outputs will be fed with the same source, but you could still set the LPF and boost for it as well. And that's going to be if you adjust that to four channel and would still utilize this LOC to overall route for both two and four channel systems. So at the four channel, it would just utilize it twice. And uh, I think I covered everything here on this device. If you have any questions or I missed something, let me know in the comments. Check out the links in the description for the XLC44X from NVX. They also, as I mentioned earlier on the manual, they offer the 22 24, 44 I just showed, the 66 and the 88, depending on how big of a system you're running. And earlier I showed you in the manual as well, if you want to run different ones, depending on what features you're running. And if you're gonna be running an aftermarket stereo or a factory, MVX has got you covered, whether you're doing two, four, or a eight out. So check out their, their uh, line out converter options they have, really cool features they have there. Be sure to hit the like if you haven't and subscribe. And I hope I give y'all some good knowledge for this device. And um, if y'all are looking forward to more videos, stay tuned, subscribe. I do daily cardio videos with demos. And I like to check out cool devices like these that you could utilize in your system as well. So stay tuned for more. I'll see you on the next one.